Hi guys! Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Sir John, your math teacher for today. How are you guys? Are you excited to learn math today? Me too! I'm very much excited to share my knowledge on how to understand and solve math problems. But before that, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more math videos. Our topic for today is to solve problems involving factoring polynomials. Don't worry, I'm here to guide you. All you need to do is to remember those ways of factoring polynomials. We will apply that in solving math problems. Are you ready? Problem number one. The floor area of a square room is x squared plus 4x plus 4. What is the length of one of the sides of the floor? I suggest you have to read the problem twice and find some clues that will help you solve the problem. You need to identify what is or are given and what is asked in the problem. In this problem, the given is the area of a square root and that is x squared plus 4x plus 4 and you are asked to find the length of one of the sides of the floor remember the formula in finding the area of a square area of a square is equal to side times side or s squared by illustration we have a square with side s to find the area of a square we will multiply the two sides of the square let's go back to the formula the formula can be written in this manner side times side is equal to the area of a square we will substitute x squared plus 4x plus 4, which is the area of the square. If the area of a square is obtained by multiplying the two sides, then we can obtain the length of the sides of the square by finding the factors of the given area. Let's find the factors of x squared plus 4x plus 4. To find the factors of a perfect square trinomial, we need to take the square roots of the first and last terms. The square root of the first term x squared is equal to x, and that will be the first term of our binomial factor. The square root of the last term 4 is equal to 2, and that will be the last term of our binomial factor. Since the middle term of the trinomial is positive, then this must be positive, then square the binomial factor. So the factors of x squared plus 4x plus 4 is the square of x plus 2, or the quantity x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 2. Going back to the problem, we are looking for the length of one of the sides of the floor. So we will just take one of the two factors. Therefore, the length of the side of a square is x plus 2. Let's have problem number 2. If the area of a rectangle is x squared plus 2x minus 3, what two binomials could represent the length and width of the rectangle. The given in the problem is area of a rectangle which is x squared plus 2x minus 3. What is asked in the problem? We are going to find the length and the width 
of the rectangle. To illustrate, let's have a rectangle. The longer side is the length and the shorter side is the width. In order to find the area of a rectangle, we need to multiply the length with the width. Again, the area of a rectangle is equal to the length times width. In the problem, the area of a rectangle is x squared plus 2x minus 3. And we are looking for the length and the width of the rectangle. In order for us to find the length and the width of the rectangle, we need to factor the area of a rectangle. Since this trinomial is not a perfect square trinomial, we will follow the steps in factoring general trinomial. To factor general trinomial, first we need to find the factors of negative 3 which is our last term in the trinomial. What are these factors? We have 1, negative 3, because 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Other factors are negative 1 and positive 3. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Since there are no more factors aside from these pairs, the next step is we are going to find the sum of the factors. First pair, 1 plus negative 3 is equal to negative 2. In the second pair of factors, negative 1 plus positive 3 is positive 2. The next step is among the sum of the factors, which is equal to the coefficient of the middle term in the trinomial. You're right. Positive 2. So, we will use this pair of factors, negative 1, positive 3, to complete the factors of the trinomial. Let's have now the factors of the trinomial. We need to find the factors of the first term, x squared. We have x times x. Next, we will use the pair of factors, negative 1 and 3. But be careful. In the problem, we are looking for the length and the width of the rectangle. Remember, the length is always longer than the width. So, the length must be x plus 3 and the width must be x minus 1. And this is our answer. The length is x plus 3, the width is x minus 1. Let's have problem number 3. If the area of a rectangle is represented by 6a squared plus 9ab and its width is 3a, what is the length of this rectangle? In the given problem, area of a rectangle is given and that is equal to 6a squared plus 9ab. Also, the width is given which is equal to 3a. We are looking for the length of this rectangle. So, we will use this formula. Area of a rectangle is equal to the length times the width. Or in symbol, we have a for area is equal to l length times w with actually we can write this formula in this manner by applying the symmetric property of equality we have l times w 
is equal to A. L and W are actually factors of A. We are looking for the length of this rectangle, so we will derive its formula. To find L, we have area or A divided by with W. So we will use this formula to find the length of the rectangle. Let's continue. We will substitute the given to the formula. Length or L is equal to the area of a rectangle is 6a squared plus 9ab divided by the width 3a. As you can see, the divisor is a monomial. So we can distribute the monomial to each term in the binomial. And that is, L is equal to 6A squared divided by 3A plus 9AB divided by 3A. Let's simplify. L is equal to 6a squared divided by 3a is equal to 2a. And then we will divide the second term by 3a. 9ab divided by 3a is equal to positive 3b. Therefore, the length of the rectangle is equal to 2a plus 3b. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more math videos. Bye!